What's good, family? We in the building. Let's get it. What's good? What's good, family? It's your boy, MI4K20, back in the building. Forgot to drop a video yesterday. Well, I didn't forget. Your boy was hella busy. Y'all like my new shirt? What y'all think? Y'all digging it? Y'all feeling it? Boom. Let's get it. <clears throat> so we in the building, man. Just want to get some things off my chest. You feel me? Um, Guys, we in a state of emergency, Hawks fans. Hawks fans, we are in a state of emergency, man. Um, you know, I'm in different Hawks groups. I be on a Hawks Twitter. <clears throat> and man, let me tell you something. It's like the fan base going back and forth with each other, complaining, arguing, saying we need to do this, saying we need to do that. Fans got little agendas because they like certain players. They don't want to get rid of their favorite player, even though their favorite player is not performing up to standard. It's just crazy. But you know what? <laughs> it's kind of cool. You know why? Because I've been a Hawks fan for a long time, probably a lot longer than a lot of people, man. Okay? Uh, don't let my look fool you. Okay? I'm up there. I'm kind of long in the tooth, right? But it's kind of cool that fans are upset because we had expectations for the team. Um, usually, most <laughs> most most fans just don't usually don't care. You know, during those down years, man, early two thousands, two thousand five, all the way up to like two thousand eight. No one actually cared if the Hawks even played. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We had zero expectations, terrible ownership, terrible, uh, I don't want to say terrible players because, you know, they, <clears throat> they, they professional NBA players. So, you know, they don't go out there to lose. We just didn't have uh, the talent. And you could blame whoever. But it does feel good to see fans upset. Because we had expectations and the team is not meeting those expectations. And as fans, we should be. You know? Fan bases of winning organizations demand excellence from their team all the time. So, it's good to have fans upset about the current state of our uh, basketball club. Um... So, you know, fans keep going back and forth, keep debating, keep holding a standard of excellence that we expect from our team, okay? Um, that's all good. But, family, we are in a state of emergency. For some reason, it seems like we can't put together a good 48 minutes of basketball on both, si uh, both sides of the ball. We either good on the offensive side one game, but bad on the defensive side. Or the times that we do hold opponents to, you know, 100, 100, 500, 10 points, we can't score the ball for whatever reason. Um, and our perimeter defense is just, is missing. Um, I like our team, you know. Do I think we need to make a trade for like a major, like a major piece? I don't think we need to, but it's hard to argue the point, argue that point when our record doesn't say that. Not record. I'm not even going to say record. Our performance, our effort doesn't show that. Our effort shows we need help, a lot of help. Um, So it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Uh, I see fans going back and forth on how to fix the team. Um. But we all know really what time it is. We really just need to fix ourselves on the defensive side of the ball. 
okay? I mean, I watch these post-game press conferences and people saying the right thing, but, you know, at this point, you know, you, it's you got to be about action, balls. We need action on the court. That's what we're not getting. We need effort on the court. We need effort on the defensive side of the ball. You know? Um, it's just... It's just, you know, this season, it's been such a disappointment, mainly because we had those expectations, you know. Maybe we thought we was going to be balling like Memphis. We thought we, we was going to be balling, maybe not as good as Phoenix, but if you ask any Hawk, <clears throat> any Hawk fan, no one, told, no one would have told you by the All-Star break we would be under 500 or even be a 500 ball club. But at the end of the day, after 50 games, 50 plus games, guys, our record says who we are. The numbers say who we are. And, you know, we got to accept that, you know. We got to accept that, you know, we are a 500 or below ball club. And we can sit here and say, oh, but last year, last year's over with. Teams have gotten better. Have we gotten better to keep up with those teams? You know, moves was made by certain teams that put them in position to where they are now. Moves like Chicago, getting DeRozan, getting ball. Teams like Cleveland making a trade, getting Jer Allen. I think that was part of a three-team deal. Uh, signing Lori Markkinen, you know, developing their young players. We're still having that veteran coming off the bench in the Kevin Love, you know. So teams got better than last year. We really didn't do nothing to improve our organization. Excuse me, we didn't really do nothing to prove our performance on the court. In our offseason, <clears throat> we didn't do enough. You know, he re-signed key players, but he didn't add key players. I mean, you could say DeLon Wright is a key on the defensive side of the ball, but he's not an elite defender. He gives us nothing on the offensive side of the ball, which is not his fault. That's his game. But our general manager, I think at this point, I think our general manager failed us. He failed to improve the team. He took the lazy way out. Oh, I'm just going to resign. I'm going to sign uh, sign John Collins. Okay, I'm going to give him max money. I'm going to extend Clint Capella for no reason at all. He still had another year left on his contract. Why he did it, I have no idea. Extended Kevin Herter. Okay. But then, you know, you go get a Gorgie Dane. Why? How does that, how did that help? How was he supposed to help us in the areas that we lacked in the Eastern Conference Finals? Or just lack period on the team? What does he bring? What, uh, what hole does he fill? He's not even playing now. Because I sure don't see him on the injury report. So he must be getting DMPs. TLC, why is he on the team? What was what he supposed to do? What was he supposed to bring? You know? So, you know, Travis didn't really help us get better in the offseason. He did absolutely nothing when you think about it. I'm not going to say nothing. I'm going to say bare, he did the bare minimum because I'm going to give him credit for DeLon Wright. But, you know, DeLon Wright, good on the defensive side, but now we're stagnant on the offensive side. But like I say, it's not his fault. That's his game. He's not a score first guard. But did we really get better in the offseason? After 50 games, I'm going to tell you guys, no, we didn't. He didn't add no impact player. And like I said, the impact player don't have to be a big name. It could be like a savvy veteran to come in and motivate the boys on the defensive side of the ball. It could have been a backup big 
to help us control the glass. But he did none of that. And, you know, I see everybody getting blamed, but nobody want to say anything about our general manager. You want to blame the players. You want to blame, well, let me keep it real. Y'all want you have to, 90% of y'all just want to blame John Collins for everything. Oh, it's Collins' fault. No one wants, I mean, people blaming Nate McMillan. Our offense is stagnant. They just stand there. Facts, that's true. But nobody sit here and say, you know what? Our general manager in the offseason did absolutely nothing to improve our team. And like I said, re-signing your own players doesn't count. That's a gimme. That's a gimme. Okay, and you didn't have to extend Capella. Don't know why you did it. So now you can't even move Capella if you wanted to try to improve in the center positions, which we need to do. You know, maybe you could have flipped Capella in a first and got us a bonus. But now to get any type of uh, all-star caliber player, you got to. You're looking at giving up Collins. You're looking at giving up Herder. You're looking at giving up Hunter. And we're still going to be stuck with Clint Capella, who don't even play in the fourth quarter now. So, yeah, I don't see nobody blaming Travis for any of this. And I don't care what he say on the radio. It's too late. Hindsight 2020 is too late now. You made the moves, and now we're paying for it. You did not improve our team in the offseason like these other teams did to get better. Oh, we're just going to run it back. Like I, I, Nobody still told me, what is Gorgie Dane's role on the team? What I would love to know, what did Travis Sling see in Gorgie Dane to make him say, we need him on our Atlanta Hawks? You should have just kept Nathan Knight for and saved, what, 80%. Of Gorgie Dane's salary. Instead of paying Gorgie Dane to sit on the bench, he don't do nothing. So I, I'm pointing my finger at Travis. Since don't nobody else want to bring him into the conversation, I'll bring him into the, into the conversation. Now, granted, you know, no, nah, not no, nah, never mind, never mind, never mind. But we are we are hurting right now. Everybody coming up with all type of different trade scenarios. What about CJ McCullough? What about Sabonis? What about this? What about that? Man, nobody's addressing our perimeter defense. Get me somebody in here who could play perimeter defense. That's where we need to help at. It's real simple. Go look at the numbers, guys. Like I said, at first I thought it was the rebounding. But I've seen we win we still losing games and we could win the battle of the boards. Then I figured out what it was. It's this three-point shooting. You go back, and every loss, I guarantee you, that team, one, shot better than we did from three, and nine times out of ten, shot better than their team average from three. But nobody want to address that. Everybody's just like, well, the rotation. Uh, Collins ain't do this. Uh, And I'm like, you know, uh, they held the team to this. It don't matter what we hold the team to if we're not scoring the ball. You got to hold. If we're not scoring the ball, guess what? Instead of 104, we need to hold them to 90. Point blank, period. And that loss to the Mavericks was terrible. I'm going to have to make a separate video for that. But we are in trouble, guys. We are in trouble. We are struggling to even stay in the playoff, the playing game seed or position. Now, granted, overall, you know, and uh, overall, you know, in our last 10 games, we seven and three. You can't knock that. It's better than being three and seven. OK, it's better. To, you know, it's better being than being oh and five. On a five-game losing streak like we, we've we had uh, more than once this year. So, I could take going 7-3. But it's the ways that we lose games. And 
the way sometimes how we win games. It's like we win games just by outscoring the other team. We still don't hold these teams uh, below some of their averages. But when we do hold them below their season, when we hold teams below their season average of shooting threes, we 99.9% of the time we win the game. So we need to get off our ass, but we're in a state of emergency. Travis needs to do something. I don't know what he can do. I don't know because I don't know who's available. I don't know if you trade for somebody as Nate McMillan going to play the dude. You know what I'm saying? If we trade for some uh for an NBA player, who we who, who are we giving up? You know? So I can't really speak on anything because you know, you know people say does CJ McCollum help this team? Does Sabonis make this team better? Does this player make this team better? On paper, you know, us a bonus. Yeah, on paper. Who are we? But who are we giving up to get a type of player like him? Who are we giving up to get a, a, a CJ McCullough? How will the minutes be uh, distributed? What's going to be a, the starting five? Who's going to be on the bench? So I can't really give a real honest opinion. All I can do is kind of speculate, and that ain't no fun, you know, but. We in trouble, guys, and we got to do something. Y'all let me know what we should be doing, man. Let me know what we should be doing. It's your boy, man, MI4K20, man. Y'all stay up. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't forget, I think we got a game tonight. Let me look at my schedule. You know we're going to go post-game. Now I'm going to change it. We're going to go one hour live pre- pre-game, and then we're going post-game live right after the game. So tap in with your boy, man. It's your boy, MI4K20, and I'm out. Y'all know what time it is. Hawks up. Mm.